Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we finish the book of Ezekiel. We pick up our study in Ezekiel chapter 45, beginning in verse 1. And so open your Bible to Ezekiel chapter 45, and I'm going to tell you once again about the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is where you can study the whole Bible using my audio Bible commentaries from Genesis through Revelation. And that's found at the Bible, versebyverse.com. So I hope you check it out. And uh, once again, that web address is the Bible, versebyverse.com. Ezekiel 45, Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, our final study in the book of Ezekiel is not going to take very long. Um, we are not going to spend much time on these five, or these actually four final chapters in this book. And I'll tell you the reason I don't want to spend too much time on it is because uh, there's a lot about it I don't know. And uh, I don't think anybody else knows for sure either. So I don't feel too bad about it. You know, the Bible says the secret things belong to God. The things revealed belong to us. And this is one section of Scripture that has not been revealed clearly. Now, there might be some who claim that it is, but it simply isn't true. You could probably, and I'm not into commentaries. I used to be years ago, and I'm not saying they don't have a place but uh, you could probably read a dozen different commentaries on these chapters and get a dozen different interpretations and ideas of what it means, uh, which tells me that God has not made it clear, and that's okay. We, we don't have to know everything. And so when it comes to these final chapters, I don't think anyone has a lock on truth except for the Holy Spirit. But let's begin in chapter 45, verse 1. Moreover, when ye shall divide by lot the land for inheritance, ye shall offer an oblation unto the Lord, a holy portion of the land. The length shall be the length of five and twenty thousand reeds, and the breadth shall be ten thousand. This shall be holy in all the borders thereof round about. Now, verses 1 through 8 of chapter 45 describe the sections of land spoken of here in verse 1. And these sections of land are to be set apart for the sanctuary and the city and for the prince. And we're not going to read verses 1 through 8. Let's skip down to verse 9. Thus saith the Lord God, Let it suffice you, O princes of Israel, remove violence and spoil and execute judgment and justice. Take away your exactions from my people, saith the Lord God. And these sorts of problems plagued the nation Israel before they conquered Babylon and were exiled. Um, and now God wants his people, when they return, to set an example of fairness and honor and honesty and integrity. So he's laying down the law. He doesn't want things to be the way they used to be. And if you read verses 10 through 12, which I'm not going to, they deal with honesty in business, talking about accuracy in weights and measures. In other words, don't put your thumb on the scale. If you own a business, don't put your thumb on the scale when you're weighing out a project, a product to be purchased by a customer. Um, so that they're going to end up paying more than what they're for. They're going to be end up paying more um, than what they should be. And that sort of thing is condemned by God. You know, he notices that sort of thing. You better be fail, fair in your business dealings. And um, then the rest of chapter 45 deals with how God wants his people to conduct worship and how they were to keep holy days when they returned from Babylonian captivity. So let's talk about verse or chapter 46 just for a minute. Chapter 46 continues to give instructions concerning offerings, how God wanted offerings done when they return 
And as I have previously said, some people see this as a picture of the millennial temple and millennial worship. But again, I have a real hard time believing what they teach since the sacrifices and the offerings are not said to be memorial here, which is what they say. Well, those are done in remembrance. They'll be done in remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Well, yeah, but the offerings here listed are not said to be memorials. They're said to be literally efficacious for atonement and for sin offerings. And boy, I've got a real problem with that. And so does the Word of God in the New Testament, especially the book of Hebrews, which absolutely forbids any sin offerings after Jesus offered himself on the cross. That's sealed it up. According to the book of Daniel, that's sealed up the scriptures that spoke of uh, the Messiah making an atonement for our sins. And, um, you know, there are problems and disagreements as to how to interpret these chapters. So, uh, but I know that's not right because that contradicts the rest of Scripture. But uh, there are, you know, in other areas, problems and difficulties. And so maybe the best thing to do is just read them and read them slowly and carefully and draw out some general principles that you can apply to your life. But at any rate, chapter 46 does give some instructions for offerings and sacrifices. And then we go to chapter 47. And let's begin our reading in chapter 47, verse 1. This is kind of an interesting section here. Afterward, he brought me again, that would be Ezekiel, unto the door of the house. And behold, and he's talking about the house of God. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under, from, from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. So Ezekiel sees a river that begins to flow from the holy sanctuary. And it's very small, very tricky. I've been at the, at the beginning of the Mississippi River. We went there this last summer in Minnesota. And it's just a little stream. You can, you can walk right across it. You can almost step across it. It's so small. And, and so that's what this river begins, uh, begins like. Very, very small. And it's coming right out of the throne of God. Verse 2. Then he brought me out of the way of the gate northward. And led me about the way outside unto the outer gate by the way that looked eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man who had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. And he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. And so the waters of this river were very shallow at first, just ankle deep. But then notice verse 4. Again, he measured a thousand. So he went a little bit further downstream, as it were. He uh, it says he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through, and the waters were to the loins. And so Ezekiel, as Ezekiel goes further and further down the river, it gets deeper and deeper. The further that it gets from the sanctuary, the deeper the water gets. Verse 5. Afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters had risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the water. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it's talking about the Dead Sea. Those waters needed to be healed, and they still do. 
because right now there's a tremendous amount of minerals in the Dead Sea which makes it impossible for anything to live there. There are no fish in the Dead Sea. At least that's what I have read. I've never been there. But the waters are so dense with, with minerals and stuff that nothing can live, which is why it's called the Dead Sea. But the Bible says here that when the flowing river that issues forth from the temple of God touches the Dead Sea, it's going to be healed. Verse 9, And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither. For they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from en even unto en Edglem. They shall be a place, they shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the miry places thereof, and the marshes thereof, shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months because their waters issued out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat and the leaf thereof for medicine. And uh, I believe this has its literal fulfillment during the millennial kingdom of Christ. Now, I, how this relates to the temple that should have been built when the Israelites returned from captivity, I really don't know. I don't know. I know and I believe with all my heart that what I have taught previous to these chapters concerning this temple that was to be rebuilt when Jesus, I should say, when the Israelites returned from Babylon, I believe that's, a, that's the only interpretation that makes biblical sense. Um, so how this relates to, to what is going to go on in the millennium, I don't know. But I do know this. We do know the end of prophecies, Okay. But we don't always understand the details leading to the end. Sometimes there's great confusion in our minds. Sometimes the details that we are given seem to contradict one another, at least to our finite human minds. That doesn't mean they do. That just means we don't get it. We don't know all the details. And we don't know how everything is going to play itself out. But we do know that God has it all under control. We know that in the end, it's going to be the way he says it's going to be. And we know that he knows how he's going to make everything come to pass and fulfill his word exactly as he said he would. And the Bible says that this river of water of life will proceed from God and it's going to bless everything that it touches. And remember, and, and this, if nothing else, it is certainly a picture of Jesus Christ because Jesus referred to himself as what? The water of life. When he spoke to the woman at the well, he told her, I can give you living water. And elsewhere, he said, I am the water of life. I am the light of the world. If nothing else, this river is a Bible in the Bible, I should say, is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything the water touched in this prophecy, in this vision came to life no matter how dead it was before that. Dead, dead. No matter how dead it was, it was given life. It was dead before the water touched it. And of course, that's the way it is with Jesus. Everyone who receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, in other words, everyone that Jesus touches is given resurrection life. Life eternal. And the opportunity to have an abundant life by living for him in this world. So if nothing else, this certainly does picture the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a type of Christ, the water of life, living water. That's for sure. And the rest of Ezekiel describes the division of the land of Israel, which again seems to pertain to the millennial reign of Jesus Christ after he returns to the earth. And I'm sorry, I can't be more detailed, 
but I just don't know. And I think we're just going to have to wait for God to explain it all to us face to face or let us experience it. And we will if we know Christ. And this is a this is one of those areas where we can show Christian charity. I mean, it's wonderful to be able to agree to agree on the things that have been revealed so clearly in the word of God and all Christians do. They are things that are essential to being saved and things that the Holy Spirit have made, has made so crystal clear. Things that no true Christians will disagree about. They're the fundamentals of faith, and, and there's no doubt they're crystal clear in the Bible. You know there's nothing ambiguous, for example, about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know there's nothing ambiguous about the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. There's nothing ambiguous about salvation by faith. These are things that all Christians can agree on and will agree on if they're genuine Christians because they're so clearly understood and taught in the Word of God. But there are other things in the Bible that we just don't know. And well-meaning Christians who love Jesus and believe the word of God, they disagree on. And so we know that God simply has not made those things clear. But we can be gracious to each other in these areas. And if need be, yeah, disagree. But do it in a an agreeable way. I will never compromise and I will never be agreeable about things that are clearly revealed in scripture. But other things, yes, absolutely. Well, I'm I'm glad that you uh, made it through the book of Ezekiel with me. Um, It's been an interesting book, hasn't it? It's one of a kind. There's no question about it, but it was a good book. And we'll pick it up in Daniel next time. And I do want to remind you that the Scripture Verse by Verse website is available for you to study the whole Bible from Genesis through Revelation using my audio Bible commentaries at thebibleversebyverse.com. That's thebibleversebyverse.com. So I encourage you to go there, begin a verse by verse study with me through the whole Bible. And if the Word of God does bless you, I would ask that you would keep in mind that this is a faith ministry and it has been for 30 years and I depend on your prayers and financial support. And so you can give in a secure method at the BibleVerseByVerse.com. Just click on the donate button at the top of the front page and give as the Lord may lead. I appreciate it. And I'll see you again next time. We'll be in the book of Daniel, all right? Join me. Can't wait. Till then, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.